hello, thank you for joining me. I'm Jennifer Roberts, and tonight we're going to discuss a subject that may make you a little uncomfortable. And for some of you, even hard to accept if your sky fairy of choice doesn't condone evolution. But I encourage you to stick around, because who knows, maybe you'll pick up something. All the sources used in this piece will be listed in the credits at the end of the show. So, we're going to discuss mankind's closest and most loyal friend, and most likely yours too, herpes. Anyway, I get it. That's not something that most of you would ever expect someone to say. A few of you may have even tucked in your lips or rubbed that spot on your face where you experienced blisters or simply just felt self-conscious. I get it. Herpes has a negative stigma in our society, but it shouldn't be that way. In fact, there may be a small medical benefit to having herpes. First, what is herpes? Well, it's a massive virus family that has 130 known species right now that has found its way into vertebrate animals across the world from fish, reptiles, to birds, and mammals, obviously. That may seem scary, but it's not as bad as you might think. There are only eight specifically targeting humans right now. So, there are two popular species that everyone dreads, herpes simplex one and two. It makes sense, getting a painful sore sucks and sucks more when it's around a sensitive area and even worse yet, when it's visible and you're really wanting to impress that special someone that you've had your eye on for, for quite a while. Hell, back in the day, it was called lover's pox. You, you know some guy a couple hundred years ago strolling around London was probably trying to use the blisters around his lips to start you know, as part of a pickup line to show how effective as a lover he was. Ah, simpler times, but anyway. Man has only known a history with herpes and probably will always know that. We can trace herpes simplex one back through our ancestors high up into the evolutionary tree. In fact, our common ancestor with chimpanzees was infected with the herpes simplex virus that was shared with both its branches. As our line split and evolved six million years ago, so did herpes. As our line became the genus Homo, herpes simplex one was born and uh, became very unique and we lived happily ever after. Okay, last bit is a stretch, and you're probably wondering about herpes simplex 2 that I just mentioned. Well, remember how I said we shared a common ancestor with chimps and it had herpes simplex? Well, the same thing that happened to us happened on the chimp side. The virus that went down that chimp line also co-evolved to the point it became a species of herpes all its own. Well, about 1.6 million years ago, something happened. We don't know how for sure, but there is what we call a crossover event. The virus infection jumps species. Think of SARS and some flu viruses do commonly today. But herpes requires physical contact. And I'm sure some of your minds went straight to the gutter. I get it. But the more logical answer is our ancestors hunted the ancestors of chimps and somehow became infected probably from a fight or a bite or a fight. However, when this happened, it was the start of herpes simplex 2 and leading to another unique stat for our human species. We are the only animal in the entire world that has the two of their very own herpes simplex viruses. That's right, we're number one. The next is human herpes virus 3, commonly known as chickenpox. Most of you have never had the joys of experiencing an outbreak of chickenpox, and to you I say, good for you and your fancy vaccines. If I sound bitter, it's because I am. This is what I, similar to what I looked like when I was six. It was a horribly painful and itchy week, but at least I got to skip school, man, so I guess it's kind of even. Most people contract this virus when they're young, and, for, and a lot of people don't remember ever getting it, which is good for them. Unfortunately, I was kind of screwed over because I had a memory that allowed me to go all the way back to when I was one and it was miserable having chicken pox. To add to the suffering, I remember how I got it too. It was a time when one kid got it and the parents would send their kids over to get it as well. The 80s. Thanks, mom. After chicken pox comes her, herpes, human herpes virus 4, the kissing disease, mono, another highly contagious version of herpes that can lead to severe illness. The last four, not as widely known, and some of them have only been discovered within the last couple of decades. On their own, in healthy people, they don't seem to cause immediate direct illness or major issues, but they are being researched 
to see if there's ties to Alzheimer's and various cancers. These species of herpes have been discovered causing cancers in people with compromised immune systems, which means two things. That at the, the macro mankind level, that these herpes strains are not a threat to our survival as a species. However, at the very personal and very real level that we all have to live in, if you are one of those people with a compromised immune system, herpes is not a game and can be deadly serious. But there's another danger as well. Yeah, it kind of gets worse. You remember when I mentioned the crossover event earlier between chimps and us? Well, you remember when I said that herpes wasn't a threat to our species 10 seconds ago? Yeah, I kind of lied. Um, you see, there's a crossover event that may be developing right now. See, these little shit monkeys are called macaques, and they aren't native to North America, except they've managed to start a new life for themselves in the one place in the U.S. that can't get anything right, Florida. Macaques carry a speci uh, species of herpes called herpes B, which has co-evolved with them, much like our herpes viruses have co-evolved with us. The problem for us is we didn't co-evolve with herpes B. And the common ancestor that we shared that they all came from is so far back that herpes B poses a serious threat to our health. In fact, people who become infected with herpes B have a serious risk, serious risk of death, and some people have died from it. Herpes isn't like COVID. It's not as viral. It requires transfer of fluids or skin-to-skin -skin contact to, to transfer. So if you see macaque, don't let it bite you. And as simple as that sounds, um, if the response to COVID has taught me anything, it's that people are stupid and we're doomed. Right now, our bodies don't know how to deal with herpes B, making it extremely dangerous. But over time, as we evolve, that should change. When we become infected with a new virus, the virus has the upper hand. Eventually, our body will learn how to minimize the damage, but the virus will also change. This is the evolutionary arms race with both learning to counter each other. As this happens, the severity of the virus lessens over time. Think of throwing a rock into a pond. At first, the ripples are big and severe, but eventually as they move out away over time, they lessen. This is what happens as we reach symbiosis. This is what has happened with herpes simplex two. When our line was first infected, it would have been more severe than it is today. But over 1.6 million years, the effects have lessened. So be grateful you only get blistering whenever you're stressed. Imagine what our ancestors had to put up back in the day when they first got it. For some viruses, the infection comes and dies out. And we have only to worry about reinfection. But with herpes, it's different. We get infected and it's for life. After the initial infection stage, the virus will hide in the cells of our body and go dormant. Studies have shown a small benefit due to this. When the virus goes dormant, our immune system stays alert and continues to look for the herpes virus. This heightened awareness will actually help the body pick up and detect new infections from other viruses, shutting them down or limiting their damage because the immune system catches it sooner. Is it going to stop all infections? No. Can it help? Yeah. I mean, this would have been a this is a good benefit for younger people who are relying on a general immune system response as their body continues to develop and catalog responses to other threats. It's also a nicer bonus. It would have been a nicer bonus for us 100 years ago and currently for people living in areas without access to medicine. In modern times, with vaccines and medicine, this mutual benefit to, with herpes isn't what it once was. Regardless of its benefit, herpes is for life and you're stuck with it. I've been warned that it would be unethical for me to encourage you to seek out herpes if you don't have it. Chances are you do, since to be human is to have herpes. We need to destigmatize it. So I'd like you to take a second and pretend you have it, whether you do or not. So stand with me and proclaim to the world, I have herpes. And if you see someone having a bad day, because they got blisters on their lips, don't give them a hard time because chances are you have it too. Anyway, that's the show. Thanks for watching and have a good night.